you could have a a, a proverbial boy raised by wolves who who was never given a, a thought to these things. And, and to to the atheist, uh, they would say that the boy raised by wolves is an atheist since he he lacks a belief in God. But if if you you know somehow he has all the necessary uh, acculturation that you could ask him questions or, or talk with him and you say yeah uh, the 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 universe ha- has a has a creator designer that is beyond the universe uh, itself uh, his first inclination is probably not going to be oh that's craziness that that's insanity his 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 first inclination is probably going to be well that kind of makes sense tell me more you know. And so why, why I think that the, the lack of belief definition of atheism fails, well, one of the many reasons is that atheists have this kind of reflexive, automatic dismissiveness of the idea. And, and that dismissiveness is certainly not the deep. I'm super excited to have my next guest on The Unapologetic Apologist. You can go subscribe to his YouTube channel. There will be a link in the description, Deflating Atheism. Mr. Deflating, or Mr. Atheism, whichever you prefer. Thank you for being here. Not Mr. Atheism. Hey, it's it's good to be here. Yeah, or, you know, looking at you, I do think you kind of look like uh, Jonathan Lithgow, but with really beautiful hair. So maybe even Mr. Lithgow would be uh, appropriate. Uh, (laughs) Uh, maybe just to get started, and before we introduce our the crasher of today's uh, episode, uh, maybe just tell the audience a little bit about yourself, how you became a Christian, and what led you to kind of being interested in apologetics and starting a YouTube channel. Well, that's uh, I kind of it was not until a few years ago that I, that I call my uh, that I even call myself a Christian, uh, and that. Was- of a gradual process, but I was never an atheist. I was, uh, for a, quite a while, I was kind of a, a generic uh, theist. But but I was kind of irked by by online atheists, even even before I, I, I was a Christian. And so uh, I never, again, I don't even think I knew the word apologetics at that time, or, or at least or at least knew of the field of Christian apologetics. But I thought a lot of the a lot of the atheist material on the internet that the, at that time was so self evidently poor that it just kind of demanded a response. And so I got into the habit of responding in comments and Facebook comments and all these things until finally I just decided, well, it'd be better to you know make some sort of a permanent record so I don't have to keep going back to these same points. So I kind of started the YouTube channel. Very cool. Um- so, well, if you were just kind of a generic theist, at that point, what would you say your position on Jesus was? Well, well can you be more specific? Well, yeah. I mean, if, if somebody had come to you and said, well, what do you think about Jesus? Do you think he really rose from the dead as a matter of history? Uh, I know. I, at the, at, again, it's hard for me to say what exactly I did and did not affirm at, at a certain time in my life where I probably wasn't giving these questions a whole lot of thought. But no, I, I probably, I probably would have told you uh, at the time that he was a, a historical figure. It's just I was, uh, you know, un, un, unsure about the claim that he that he was, you know, raised from the dead. Okay, so so what would you say would have maybe pushed you to the point where you you were kind of accepting of that history of his resurrection? Well, I think what well, what would have pushed me to the point is what did is it's it's various arguments from from you know online apologists from Christian apologists and stuff. But as I said, it was it was always. I, I think my experience mirrors that of a lot of people. Is that the uh, complete vacuity of online atheism actually pushed me towards Christianity? Because because like everything they said was was so kind of self evidently facile and just just lacking that I thought, well, there has to be <laughs> there has to be some merit in what they're against because all their arguments for what they're for are, are just so poor. Yeah, so so I see someone who pretends that it was the evidence who persuaded him, and not some kind of bias of a uh, hope of the hereafter, because he can't handle the reality of the truth of atheism, as it were. Yeah, well, I, I have a whole rant about that, but yeah. Well, please, I, I'd be very interested in your rant there. Well, they, they all they all don their little uh, psychologist beanie, and they all don their little sociologist uh, beanie, and they say, well. You know, you fear death, or that that's the only reason, or, or you know, religion was mankind's attempt to explain, you know, the things he could not explain. I'm like, 
uh, you know, citation, please. Can you please, uh, uh, ver you claim that you have an evidence-based uh, worldview, yet you throw, up, throw out these sweeping assertions about psychology and sociology that uh, apparently don't require any evidence whatsoever. So, yeah, I thought that was a, a complete hypocrisy. That's actually... Uh, if if you read uh, if you read C.S. Lewis, you'll know of the of the fallacy called bulverism, where you ascribe motives to a uh, person. I, th I think <laughs> he's, so, he's so disgusted by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have something. To say? <laughs> well, no. I'm sorry. No, no, you're fine. <laughs> um, I was gonna say. Oh well, yeah, but yeah, but where you where you uh, ascribe motives to uh, a, a person's belief. In order to discredit, so it's kind of like an ad hominem, but uh, but it's it's always it's always the the reason, the true reason for your beliefs, are not your stated reasons, and that is bad uh, in in how atheists uh, you know try to dismiss Christian beliefs. You also see it a lot in politics. It also it also happens a lot in politics these days. And uh, if I were to be honest, I'd say uh, politics is occupying a lot of my time. Mm. Yeah, well, I said, and you could you could do it from a Christian basis too. You could do I, I mean I see a, a whole bunch of Christians say, oh well, you know, atheists are only atheists because you know they want to live without sin and not you know have to face any judgment. And I think that's wrong too. Right. You know, I'll speak against that too. So I'm sure. not I'm not hypocritical about that. Yeah, but but it does show that the criticism criticism could go both ways, right? It's not only yes. against the Christians yes. if you're going to just ascribe motive. Um, and I do think it could also be a form of the genetic fallacy. I've seen atheists kind of back off and say, well, it's not the genetic fallacy because I'm not saying that the belief is therefore false. It's like, yeah, but you are kind of trying to invalidate maybe the reasonableness of someone using evidence to come to the worldview. So it's... Exactly, exactly. And I will, I will say there, there always comes a point where sometimes it's, it's really difficult to take a person's state and motivations uh, as, as being genuine. At that point, I mean... There's nothing. There's nothing wrong with with voicing those concerns that maybe a person has some other things. Like, uh, I well, again, I'd be glad to speak at length about that, which you probably wouldn't want. But it, the thing is, you can say that. The thing is, that can't be a basis for dismissing the belief itself. Otherwise, it's it's very much similar to to an ad hominem or a genetic fallacy or something. Yeah. But yeah. The, the the reasons that atheist arguments suck is that atheist arguments suck. It's not because they they have this juvenile desire to to uh, uh, you know try to crush uh, other people's most dearly held beliefs or anything. <laughs> right. Um, so I guess before we continue, because I do have some questions about a debate you recently had, I should introduce uh, Mr. John Dunphy because he's here to kind of help me co-interview. Hello, Mr. John. How are you, sir? Um, uh, I'm doing all right. All I heard was in response to an intelligent argument, like, oh, you're just afraid of death, so you can't deal. You're, you're mentally unstable. All I heard was genetic fallacy, you know, ad hominem. That's just word salads. I mean, yeah. Well, what to expect from a Steelers fan? Yeah, we're all atheists, apparently, so, you know. Ever since we, ever since we lost the Green Bay Packers, just all of Pittsburgh has become uh, atheistic. <laughs> you just mentioned it though. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. Yeah, I would, I would say something about your podcast, so. <laughs> well. Uh, I, yes, I am trying to navigate through some of these slides, so I apologize if any of the audio is lost out on here. Um, uh, but so... I, I do have a question for Rob. All right, go go ahead, Mr. Dunphy. If, <laughs> who's the most annoying atheist you've done a response to? Oh, well, well it's been, I've been out of the game for so long. As you, know, as you guys uh, might know, I've had some family difficulties, so I, have, I haven't been uh, dipping my toes into atheist land too recently. But, uh, like, like... My my response is different from from like Max's, but as far as just like atheists, it doesn't even have to doesn't even necessarily have to deal with the content of what they say. Sometimes just their their way of expressing themselves is just uh, incredibly grating, and I would put uh, Bionic Dance at number one, and uh, probably Cult of Dusty at number two. Literally, I cannot get through like 
five seconds of their videos. It's just, it's just like fingernails on the blackboard to me. Well, for me, it's entertainment because it's just like, man, this is the guy who almost had me become an atheist when I was younger, like 2014. I'm so sorry. Well, then it shows you, no, the lack of apologetics in the church is horrible. And it's just like, no wonder people were becoming atheists. Yeah. Of people like Cult of Dusty take advantage of the internet while Christians don't and well, uh, have a pretty good influence. That's that's another thing, and that's another thing where, where I'm going to say things about, about motives because I think we all know that you know kids who are 14 or whatever, whatever years old, they have certain needs that they need to feel like they belong. You know, they need to have some sense of purpose. I think when they come across when they come across these internet atheists, I think uh, it kind of feeds it kind of feeds these these kind of desires they have, but it feeds them in a very cheap way. It's like I'm hungry, so I'm going to eat like donuts or crullers and stuff. It's like no, that's not that's not like nutritious food. You need something better than donuts and crullers if you're hungry. But I think uh, a lot of a lot of times uh, adolescents are very insecure, and so they, you know, the atheists kind of sell them this very kind of cheaply bought sense of superiority, where if you just kind of parrot these slogans, you can, you know feel that you're superior to, to your, your classmates and teachers and parents and whatever. You know, I, I saw a great clip from uh, this one dude. Uh, I, I think he's the dude who started the Harlem Shake, but, like, he does this one character, and he, he, was, he was responding to some atheist comment on his channel, and uh, he, he described them perfectly. He was like, yeah, some 16-year-old sitting back in the classroom on Reddit thinking he's better than everyone. And uh, he went through his subscriptions and was Richard Dawkins' foundation for science and reason. And I was just laughing because uh, his description of the average atheist and how Reddit is their number one source. Yes. Yeah, I or, or at least it, it was back in the day, back like 20, 20, 2010, 2012, around that era especially. Yeah. yeah. I also like the way Steven Crowder described it, which is like they think they somehow got something that the rest of us missed because they watched half of a Christopher Hitchens debate. It's like, yeah. That's, 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 and listen, I'll admit, when I first got into it, I fast forward through everything except William Lane Craig, but I'm more mature now. I try to watch primarily The Atheist, so I'm not perfect, but I'm doing better. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're, you're definitely far from perfect, but you know. Well, here, here's a question for you, Rob, because, you know, John was just asking who you think the most intelligent atheist you've debated is. is have you come across this new guy? He, he destroyed uh, Trent Doherty on John's channel, this atheist, and um, he destroyed Greg Kogel and Gary Habermas. And I, the, the episode hasn't aired yet. I heard he just destroyed uh, Braxton Hunter. His name is Maxwell Yates. Have you heard of this guy? He destroyed Gary Habermas? Yeah, they debated him. Yeah. Uh, he debated him on the rest of the And he, he also had a friend help him destroy inspiring philosophy as well. I mean, they're, they're a new de oh. debate team, and they're, they're like the new atheists, yeah. you could say. I'll, I'll introduce you to very him. original. I, I'll have you, maybe, maybe uh, I'll introduce you to him. We can have you come on the channel and debate him if, if you'd be happy doing something like that. Um, but yeah, so... Oh, what was the guy's name? It was something Richards. I should have written down his name. You would think if I, if I was a professional interviewer, I would have written down the guy's name before I started asking you questions on the debate you just had on Modern Day Debate. Um, well, I knew it in my head, and now it's complete. It's complete anathema. But the debate was, is atheism the default position or the default belief? Which... Uh, no, that was, my, that was my debate. Yeah. Oh, what... Did it seem as though I was asking John? I certainly wasn't asking John. John doesn't debate anyone because he's he's afraid. Um. <laughs> yeah, I debated an open theist. They 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 got their stuff much better than atheists. So perhaps this is a good point. Yes, but his last name was Richards, and he was the founder of Canadian Atheists, which I, which I thought was really interesting. Probably why he was so nice because you know he's a Canadian. Um, but so yeah, I guess right off the bat, you had kind of prepared. Uh, an opening statement for what you thought would be the position he was defending, but then he was kind of defending a different position. So maybe you could kind of introduce us to kind of what happened there. Uh, yeah, well, well, because uh, the the vicious host uh, uh, asked me, he was kind of uh, fishing around uh, for debate topics, and so like. My main thing, my main thing, the 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 topic was suggested by me. Because I, I already had some material prepared. I, I already had some stuff written down. 
So I said, well, I could use the stuff I, I wrote down and use it as, you know, kind of part of the, the opening statement and we could debate that thing. Otherwise, you know, I was kind of apprehensive about writing anything. By the way, I'm not an experienced debater or anything, so I, I, I don't have a whole lot of experience. So it, it can be kind of intimidating when, when you're put into the, into the, into the kind of forum of a, of a formal debate. But uh, so I took, I took this material I already had and uh, I, made, I made an opening statement. And like every position I responded to uh, in, in my opening statement, he demurred. And he did not, he didn't really seem to have any position whatsoever. His atheism was, was a complete negation. It's, you know, as you know, uh, uh, someone who defines their own atheism purely as a mental state. Or, or a lack of belief. I mean, like I said, I mean, by that definition, uh, 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 you know, a tree stump would be an atheist. So I found it enormously difficult. And so I or, tried. Or a bag of wet hair. Yeah, a bag of wet hair or anything, yes. And so I kept, I kept to nail him down. And to my surprise, he was actually very consistent on, on the lack of belief. And I said, well, are you going to say that God's existence is more improbable than it is probable. He would not commit to that. I said, uh, would you commit to the premise that that, a that theism is necessarily irrational? He would not commit to that. And so, and so I asked him, well, what is, what is Canadian atheists about then? He said, well, you know, we're for you know, accepting you know, atheists into society and we're, we're against anti-blasphemy laws. I was like, well, I'm against anti-blasphemy laws too. So <laughs> what, is our, what is our point of disagreement here? And if you say, well, I lack a belief in God, I said, I agree, you do lack a belief in God. There's there's absolutely zero disagreement. So I, I found it I, I was I would say I found it frustrating, but he was just he was such a, a, a decent dude that, you know. Or or at least he seemed nice, who knows? Well, I, I have a reductio ad absurdum. As Joe Rogan would say, it's a home run. You know, there are three thousand gods. Oh wait, there are nine 999 gods, Richard Dawkins says, even though it's 3,000 and other versions of the argument. There are 3,000 gods you could believe in. What will make sure it's different? You lack a belief in their gods, which for some reason makes you an atheist, but, you know, I guess a Canadian atheist welcome you in, but, you know. <laughs> he, did, he didn't even try stuff like that. Yeah. Um, he should have. Two, two of the kind of initial points he had made that I found interesting – where kind of you have to be taught about God. And so he seemed to be like rewinding all the way as a baby. Like you're born, you don't, you're kind of a blank slate, you know, my, setting aside some of your biological inclinations, right? Um, you're kind of a blank slate and you have to be taught about God. And then he was kind of pointing to the diversity of beliefs about what God is like if you look at different cultures and different beliefs. Um, and for me, and you got into this when you mentioned a book uh, that you had pulled up on Amazon. But for me, it's like, belief. Yeah, for me, you know... It, Regardless of the diversity of what God looks like in other cultures, to me, I think there's a question that has to be asked, which is, why is, does there seem to be this something in humanity that just recognizes a deity and has, has you know, attributes anything that has these religious experiences? Regardless if we're attributing them to different deities, why is there something in humans that just has religious experiences? Why do we have that inclination? I agree with you, and, and and what I one thing where he was just dead wrong is that he seemed to think that the fact that you know obviously people end up in in religions that are not Christianity, and so that somehow invalidates it. I guess maybe it's kind of implicitly going to the to the uh, kind of three thousand gods canard, but uh, yeah, it's not like I'm not the the argument. First off, uh, I think it's important to say if I didn't make this clear in the debate. I don't think that's it's really material uh, to the debate of whether atheism is is the default position. That's a that's a philosophical debate. That that's like a that's a, a you know an epistemic debate. That's not something where you get into areas like like psychology or sociology or, or things like that. I didn't really think it was relevant. Uh, but a lot of people, even in the comments, if you read through the comments, they 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 seem to think that you know. If if anybody says that atheism is is the default or is not the default or whatever, that this is somehow uh, a, a naturally occurring, you know, something that we you know biologically have or whatever. That I didn't think that was relevant to the debate at all. 
And, and as it turns out, nothing was relevant to the debate since there was no debate. But yes. Yeah. Well, one, one thing I was thinking through, maybe you could tell me what you think of this, because, you know, first of all, if you define atheism correctly, as you did off the bat, which is a positive claim, right, about the absence of deities in reality, well, then no, of course, that's not the default. And he might have even agreed to that. Um, but then even if you define atheism as an absence of belief and you would, and so you say, oh, well, of course, by default, you're born with an absence of beliefs. You have to be taught any positive beliefs. Even there, I'm not quite sure that atheism would be the default because you could still say as someone gets older and matures, even if they're not taught about God, they could still have some kind of natural inclination to believe in a higher power. I know people who have said that that was the case for them. They weren't necessarily raised in church or taught about God, but they always kind of looked at reality and just said, yeah, there has to be some kind of higher power. And they felt kind of an, in, an internal inclination to, to discover that and see what or who it was. And that, that was exactly the point I made. That was exactly the point I made because I said the idea that the universe has, has a creator and a designer is a, a very appealing one, is, is I think self-evident to a lot of people. Uh, now you could you could take issue with that. Say, well, there's more to it than simply you know the world looks designed, therefore it's designed. And I'll agree with you, but but it is a very natural conclusion to to come to. And so that's why I say is that you could have a a, a proverbial boy raised by wolves who who was never given a, a thought to these things. And, and to to the atheist, uh, they would say that the boy raised by wolves is an atheist since he he lacks a belief in God. But if if you you know somehow he has all the necessary uh, acculturation that you could ask him questions or, or talk with him and you say yeah uh, the 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 universe ha has a has a creator designer that is beyond the universe uh, itself uh, his first inclination is probably not going to be oh that's craziness that that's insanity his 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 first inclination is probably going to be well that kind of makes sense tell me more you know. And so why, why I think that the, the lack of belief definition of atheism fails, well, one of the many reasons, is that atheists have this kind of reflexive, automatic dismissiveness of the idea. And, and that dismissiveness is certainly not the deep. Yeah. Well, see, so an answer to your, uh, well, the universe seems designed, and, you know, well, why, why do people believe in a deity? And it's quite simple. Man created God in his image. <laughs> Do you that's have crazy anything crazy. that's not just a cliche? Yeah. Are you telling me I'm unoriginal? I had a legitimate point I was going to make, and now I can't remember it, thanks to John. <laughs> hey, don't blame me. I, I don't control your memory. You talk about a boy raised by wolves, but yeah. No, I... I... I, I only saw like the first half hour of that debate and you know when when atheists say the the default position is atheism because when you're born you're an atheist it's like no you're an agnostic you're literally of a state of no knowledge in fact you're not even agnostic because an agnostic is at least a person who affirms the position that there is not enough evidence to make a conclusion either way basically with whole judgment so uh you don't you're not an epistemologer yet so there is no real dismissiveness or you know that, that, that's, kind of, that's kind of also a frustration, which which I probably should have mentioned, is that uh, <laughs> to call atheism a lack of belief is is a waste of a word, because we already have a word for agnostic. If, if you're going to say that an atheist is agnostic, I mean, we already have a word. Why, why not just use the word that we already have, yeah, you know? They want to separate into strong and weak atheism. You know what it is? They want the claim of atheism, right? But, but without having... Without, without the burden of actually having to defend exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, that's really it because <laughs> they want they want the edgy they want the edginess of atheism without the uh, without the uh, intellectual uh, uh, burden of, of having a burden of proof. Yeah. yeah, I mean something more appropriate would be like atheism and then like strong and weak agnosticism, right? Because even some of the atheists today will kind of say, well, it's more more or less the positive claim that there are no good reasons. To believe in God, which you could say is a stronger claim than just kind of agnosticism in the sense that's kind of apathetic towards it. It's like, well, I don't know if there's a God or not. But even when the term agnosticism was invented, it was invented to mean that, that you can't know, that there isn't sufficient evidence that you can't know. So even if that's the positive claim they're making, that's still agnosticism, not atheism. Yeah, well, well, the, the can't know definition, it still admits of, of several varieties. I was always confused by that. And by the way, uh, no one seems to like that definition. 
No, no, no Christian or atheist ever seems to like uh, the Thomas Huxley uh, uh, definition of, of agnosticism because nobody uses it. I, I think because it, of because of its ambiguity. Now, does that mean that in, in the current year, which of, which of course is not Thomas Huxley's uh, uh, current year, but just in the sum of human knowledge, it is not capable, you know, possible to make that determination with what we know, or is it, it is impossible in principle to know? Um, or is it uh, an individual, maybe the knowledge is out there in the world, but an individual, it is not possible for that individual to know. So there are three ways you can go with it as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, well, Tom Jump's claim, to, well, Tom Jump says, that, and he says that this is what atheism means, is that you can't know, that the, there isn't sufficient evidence to know. And one way he does that is essentially by saying, well... Well, well no, 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 I mean, you're going to, just before you proceed, do you mean it, it is not possible in principle with all with all the knowledge that we could ever have in human history it is still not possible to know well do you know his argument from naturalistic pantheism well, he's, he's, what, what he sa says is it, that uh, epistemically we don't have the epistemic capability to to know that kind of a metaphysical claim it's just it's just out of the reach of humanity because yeah. he argues that there can be other possible metaphysical claims that equally explain the evidence and somehow makes the leap that therefore uh, they're both equally explainable, and you can't really make one way or the other. So, hence, it's more rational to be an atheist, even though that would be agnostic. Okay, okay. So he he believes it is not possible in principle ever to have knowledge that could tip it one way or the other. Yeah, because there that he always uses naturalistic pantheism. Naturalistic pantheism can be used as an alternative and equally explain all the evidence and have the same probability, which is his claim, but it's not quite defended. Wait, is, is it pantheism or panentheism? Um, he always uses naturalistic pantheism. Okay. Which, which he defines as an eternal, all-powerful nature. So it's basically all the attributes of God just subtract consciousness. He says yeah. it could equally explain all the evidence just as well, but without the arbitrary addition, addition of personhood into the hypothesis. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, well, yeah, I'm That's sorry. Right. I'm, I'm trying to think of the word there, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I did, I did write down a couple of things. Oh, with, no, it was, yeah, with, with, all, with all first cause arguments, so there, there's the added attribute of, of being purposive, of having purpose. And so I guess, I guess he, he has something that could check all those uh, metaphysical boxes minus the uh, kind of purposive, intentional nature of the, of the mm -hmm. first cause. Which, but which, even when he does it, like he'll invoke certain things. Like when some, some, somebody says, well, a consciousness has to choose x for x to happen right because it's like a new event well he said well maybe there's just something built into nature that can choose and i'm like but, but you're using like personhood language to say it could just be built into nature See, yeah. Uh, yeah and that and now you're just adding you're, you're you're having your part of a cake you could say because at this point your your proposition you're not you don't really have defined too well so how can you even use that as an equal explanator as an equal explanation if you're just going to appeal to what we don't know, which is God's the gaps, well, in his case, naturalistic pantheism of the gaps. Yeah, well, the, I mean, the thing is that even, even Christian apologists, I, I mean, would say that, you know, when we describe, when we describe God's uh, attributes, you know, his lovingness, whatever, et cetera, et cetera, all that is by analogy. It's analogical. That we don't actually think that, you know, God is, is a human mind. It is, but it could be analogized as a human mind. Mm. Yeah. That's well, then, then you get to the incarnation of a, a god, a super consciousness mind, and so on. Transcendent mind somehow takes on the form of almost a human mind, almost, if he's fully human, fully god. Unless you adopt the one heresy, which is, well, god sort of is just a soul taking on a body, almost. But uh, that's not what the doctrine of the incarnation is. Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, obviously, I mean, I mean, God the Father. You know, it's it's always by analogy, not not God as man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I just remember. I wish I could recall who it was that was debating. Oh, it was when um William Lane Craig was uh, talking to um Roger Penrose on Unbelievable, and Roger Penrose was basically saying, "Well, God just seems too much like us." And William Lane Craig said, "Well, maybe we're like him." And I thought that yeah, 
That, yes. That's a great point. It's because we're created. It's not like we. It seems so made up. You could say, "Oh yeah, we just made up a god to mirror father and son." Like we humans have father and son. It's like, well, no. I think it's actually just the reverse. We were created to kind of mirror uh, the internal triune God, and so our relationships are different in that aspect. But they mirror that, and so that's why there's language that, like you said, is analogous. Yes, exactly. That or we created God in our image. Stop. I'm trying to make legitimate points here. Um, <laughs> and that's not a legitimate point. Okay. Okay, I see how it is. Confirmation bias. No. Well, what well, you think, DA, where, where random atheists just will yell out a random fallacy even though it's not relevant? Yeah, just, just name the fallacy. I, I feel like there's a devil's advocate. Then there's like a third string. You know, <laughs> you, know, you have the... All, all the good devil's advocates were out. Special here. pleading fallacy. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, one uh, last point, and we'll move on to some other points, but we'll do that for web extended because those are more political uh, topics. But one other point, and this came up in the Q&A, was morality. Someone kind of asked uh, Richards, I hope I'm saying his last name right, I believe it was Richards, um, you know, where his morality comes from. And he kind of gave this very subjective answer. He said, well, it comes from me. And they kind of gave some analogies. Oh, I try to do it, you know, with, with kind of these theories of, you know, how lawmakers try to, you know, give equality to everyone. And he said, I hope I try to get it right. You know, and I hope I always get it right. And maybe conversations like this can help me change my mind because I am always trying to get it right, but it ultimately comes from me. And you, uh, deflating, made a really good point that um, that's a contradiction. Because if you're saying it's ultimately subjective... Yeah but I try to get it right. Well, right according to what standard? Exactly, exactly. Uh, yeah, and, and he, he did it within the space of a sentence. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, that's what I find is a lot of times uh, when, when atheists are pressed with this, and by the way, I'll just say that like arguments for morality are never like my first line of defense. That's not really my particular uh, bag of tricks is like arguments for morality. But when, when atheists kind of, try to defend it i find they go for a very kind of saccharine very kind of a, a you know sentimental you know it's nice to be nice kind of arguments that don't really bear up to scrutiny you know and so and so yeah i mean i mean i think it was just an, an underthought position and he went off he went off on a on a rant about about more about morality and his kind of you know, egalitarian view of, of morality. Uh, and, and I thought it was not, it was really kind of an irrelevant discussion that he went into, but, but out of courtesy, I didn't interrupt him or anything, but yeah, uh, again, he, uh, he's obviously coming from, you know, an egalitarian perspective and he just kind of assumes that to be the case. I don't really necessarily have any problems with that, I just don't think he has a, a basis for it, really. I think if if he wants it, he looked for uh, what's uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, uh, Richard Rawls, I think, is the name of the philosopher. Uh, Wait, is it Richard R Randolph, the one dude? Yeah, yeah. Well, well the the president of Canadian atheists. Yeah. Uh, uh, I forget the, Rawls is is the name of the of the philosopher who, who's kind of a, a neo kind of a neo uh, uh, utilitarian. No, not a neo pragmatist, I should say. A utilitarian's kind of a dirty word, but uh, yeah. So, uh, and he obviously has a very kind of you know liberal, kind of egalitarian perspective. But I think better than any sort of thought experiment where where all all our you know all you know every every advantage that we have in society is shielded from from everyone else. I think basically the best the best justification for that egalitarian philosophy is probably found in the Gospels, you know, where, where Jesus says there's neither rich nor poor, Jew, Jew nor Gentile, man or woman, you're all one in Jesus Christ. I think that's probably the most effective basis for egalitarianism. Yeah, well, and that, that brings up a good point, which is that, you know, even if he's saying, like, egalitarianism is uh, something, say, that's even more than subjective, it's still only epistemology. It's still only at that kind of baseline level. And what you're doing by saying, well, you know, the Gospels provide a source for that, is you're going higher into the ontology and say, hey, there's an extra onto ontological basis for egalitarianism. Yes. yes. Which is, I think is really helpful. Can you define egalitarianism? Is that how you say it? Yeah, it's just, it's just a doctrine, I guess. Well, again, this is not anything I think anyone here is an expert in, but I think generally that, that uh, uh, you know, economic equality is to be preferred. You know, and let's kind of leave it at that. 
which which you know is not nece- you can't equate that with communism or anything because I think I think there there are arguments and and you know guys like Jordan Peterson uh, make arguments as to why it's good not to have huge disparities between the rich and the poor. You know. Oh, I'm definitely going to be asking you about Jordan Peterson and the Web Extended because oh man some interesting conversations that can be had there. Um, but I do, before we go, uh, I know there's the YouTube channel, Deflating Atheism. There's the Facebook page, Deflating Atheism. Is there anything else you'd like to point the audience to? <laughs> well, yes. Funny you should say that. First off, I'm in the process. Oh, this, 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 uh, bass. <laughs> so I'm kidding. This, this guy's channel. <laughs> He's a Steelers fan. So no. no, but, uh, <laughs> Go through the very the very tedious process of 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 uh, uploading my uh, my back catalog onto BitChute. So I, I'm about one a quarter of the way done. But yeah, it's a very very boring process. But uh, there's also obviously look for deflating atheism on, on BitChute, and and I also have a very non essential Instagram, and I have a, a Patreon. Oh, awesome! Yeah, definitely everybody. But yeah, I, I, I do. Uh, Please do, uh, first off, you know, YouTube is unsubscribing people from channels like crazy these days. Uh, I, 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 I like lost seven subscribers in one day and I only have three more subscribers than I did a month ago. So they are, they are like deleting, uh, subscribers. So please subscribe to the YouTube channel and please resubscribe if that's necessary because I, I, they really are. Uh, unsubscribing people and the the facebook page is, is a good way to uh keep abreast of what's going on yeah and, and i'll back you up on that that's happened to me a couple of times and my first initial kind of thought was oh i guess people just stop being interested in the channel but it's, it has happened on multiple occasions and probably because i have some political videos uh on my vi- my channel not just the christian apologetic stuff but yeah everyone definitely go subscribe to deflating atheism on patreon to help support him he's doing great work over there i really enjoy his content and uh, we will see you guys on Web Extended. But to see that, you'll have to head on over to subscribestar.com slash TUAC. You subscribe, you get all the bonus content with Braxton Hunter, uh, Cameron Patusin from Caption Christianity, Josh Rasmussen, and, uh, and this one with Deflating Atheism. Deflating Atheism, thanks so much for being here, sir. And uh, see you on Web Extended. Thank you so much.